Welcome in everybody. This is Cooking with Margie. Margie Bansher is here. She is a registered dietitian with the North Carolina Extension and she is our cooperative extension agent here. And uh, uh, I'm Eric Stafford. I work for Caldwell County Government Television and she's going to show me something cool today because she always cooks the coolest stuff. So what do you got today, Margie? Well, you know, last time we were together, we preserved tomatoes uh, in a water bath and uh, green beans in a pressure canner. So and, we, uh, we, did, we did some canning. So yes. you need to go back and watch those too because those are pretty good. <laughs> So that's a great way to preserve food. Uh, uh -huh. They're shelf stable, so if the power goes out, then we're all set. Uh, but a simpler way to preserve uh, your vegetables from your garden is to freeze them. Ooh. Yeah. So, so give it the old cold chill. The cold chill. <laughs> and uh, I mean, they have a good quality as well. Yeah. Uh, they're usually a little bit crisper than whenever you uh, uh, can a vegetable. And so. it is, but it's if you freeze, it doesn't last as long as canning. I think that's kind of the thing with the canning is it's a little longer down the road, isn't it? That's true. I mean, the canned goods uh, they're at their highest quality for about a year, but then um, they can continue to be safe after that. They okay. just might not be the highest quality. Whereas um, in the freezer, I mean, it could be safe after a year, but it's <laughs> just going to have. Uh, you know, freezer burn maybe. Yeah, a little freezer and, burn there. Uh, yeah, just just not that good. Yeah, so. not, as, not as long as a year. You right, know, give right. It, give that a little less time. A little less time than a year. So, um, you know, it is squash season, right? We're right. here we are in August. It's hard to believe. Well, I've got some uh, sitting on my counter at home right now. Yeah, I mean, if you leave your uh, car unlocked, uh, there might be some <laughs> out there in your car in the front seat. So <laughs> that's just what we deal with. Because once it starts coming on, it, it comes on strong, right? It is on. <laughs> so I was thinking squash would be a great uh, demonstration for freezing today. Okay. So I've got a, a cutting board here for you. Uh oh. So uh, let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> All so, right. so what are we, I see you've got medallions kind of cut here. Yeah, we're just going to uh, do coins that are about a half inch, oh, okay. about so a half a inch wide, a little thicker. A little thicker than if you're frying it up. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So so we're going to do a half inch, just, just do the little coins. Okay. And um, yeah, squash, actually you wouldn't be able to, um, to can squash because, you know, it's kind of a delicate vegetable. So I'm liking this knife now. <laughs> this is a good knife. <laughs> Yes, it's uh, short, <laughs> sharp. Number one, it's sharp. That's the cool thing. So, yes, and uh, it's always great to have a nice, nice chef's knife. It just, it's so much faster than using a paring oh, knife is. or something like that to try to, to cut your vegetables. Okay. So, um, this is kind of nice too because there will already be cut for you once you get them out of the freezer. They're, they're ready to go. So you're doing part of that work now. I stack in mine like poker chips. So. <laughs> no poker today. <laughs> no poker today. <laughs> so Not that I'm good at that. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're putting this in uh, a basket, and certainly you wouldn't have to have uh, a basket like this. I mean, the goal is we want to blanch it. Okay. So, so blanching it just means we're going to put it in boiling water, um, and we're going to make sure it's at a boil. Uh, start our time. We have to blanch it for a certain number of m minutes, yeah. depending on what type of vegetable it is. So for this vegetable, it's three minutes. Okay. So All right. I've got my water. Oh, yay. My water <laughs> is rolling right okay. now. So we got some so, rolling water. Yes, that's what we want. And so here I am. I've got my squash, and, and I'm just going to... Just put that in here. Yay, that's easy enough. And hopefully it won't take long for it to get uh, to, the, to the boil again. A lot of people like to do this with corn. Um, you, ha you need to know the exact time to blanch because what it does is it deactivates enzymes that uh, could make the flavor off or make the color off. It just, it's a better product uh, if you blanch it. 
And and where would you find those times? Would you find those on the uh, the food preservation site? Very good. The, <laughs> <laughs> the National Center for Home Food Preservation. It has a section on freezing that'll go through all this. It has a table that tells you the the different times of of uh, the different vegetables. Oh, okay. Um, but. I think corn on the cob is a really good one because that is, is so nice to have that in the winter. And uh, I have yet to got, get a local ear for the summer. So I've got, that's on the to-do list, right? <laughs> <laughs> got to have it. Okay, so it's uh, starting to boil, looks like. Okay. So I'm going to put a lid on it. Okay. And I'm going to start my timer, and uh, so this one is for three minutes. Okay. So we'll just we'll just leave it in there for three minutes. So if I wanted to uh, say I wanted to grate zucchini for um, zucchini bread, which is so yummy any time oh. of year, <laughs> um, I've got this little steamer. So what I would do is I would go ahead and grate it. And I would just put the steamer in above the boiling water with my grated zucchini and then um, get it uh, steaming and time it for a minute and a half. And then I would take this out and drain it really well and then just put it in uh, reusable containers and about the portion that I would want to use. So you could say, well, I'm going to use a half cup at a time. I'm going to use a cup at a time. Um, so I like to use um, the Ziploc, or we're not supposed to use brand names, uh, free, <laughs> freezer bags that have a zip <laughs> are nice. Um, and you, know, you can put whatever size you want. And some people, some people will like to use vacuum sealing if you have one of those. Um, contraptions or pieces of equipment those are nice but then I would put a one cup of grated zucchini and then put the date on there um, and you, you know you can even have a pile of them um, in your freezer yeah you can stack them really well in the freezer I find so yes yes so so yeah in the middle of the winter I think I've come up with an idea myself uh, to, to know what exactly I have in my freezer because um, it's really hard to know, right? If you have a big <laughs> freezer, especially if you have a chest one, I have an upright one, but the chest ones are really hard to know what is in that freezer. So um, labeling everything, dating it, and then keeping a list of what is in your freezer w with you know, the date and what it is every time you put something in there where you can see that. And, and that will remind you that you need to, to be using some of that food. That's good. I, I need an inventory list, I think. That makes, us, it makes sense. Yeah, I think it happens to everyone, right? Yeah, <laughs> you, you think, oh, we, we got that. So. Yeah, <laughs> what year did I put that in there? <laughs> <laughs> I do put the dates on the bag, but I'm like, you know, oh, uh, uh, but an overall list I think is a good idea. Yes, I, um, I saw um, a container of, it said cabbage on there. I must have steamed some cabbage, and it was just too much. I, have, I didn't put the date on it, so I have no idea uh, you know, how long it's been in there. I'm sure that it's, it's still safe, but the quality probably isn't that good. So, so uh, I just need to get that out of there. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Yay. It's been, it's been boiling for three minutes. So I'm going to uh, just lift that out, go and turn this off. And we're going to, we want to cool it really quickly. Okay. See how nice that is? That is nice. But if, if you just had some sort of a, you could even pour it in the, if you had a regular uh, colander, you could just pour it out in the, in your sink. And we're going to submerge it into the, the water here because mm. we want to cool it fast. It's a really fast way to cool it. 
That's it. Doesn't get much faster than an uh, ice bath, than right? Ice bath, yeah. <laughs> See how that feels, yeah. That's that's nice and cold. Well, that doesn't take long at all. Well, there you Let's go. Get that down, and then we're gonna drain that again. And I think I'll just set that in my dish drainer over here and let it drain a little bit while we move on. But then, of course, we would just pack those in. Uh, Either a rigid container or um, or the freezer bag, so so we can just let that drip a little bit. <laughs> so that's so easy. It is so easy, mm -hmm. and it's a, a, another great way to preserve food. Yes. So um, you know, I was thinking that we are in the South, so we have to have a squash casserole, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to, but we'd like to. How's yes. that? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're going to make today. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. So summer squash, um, there are a variety of different types, but I think that um, having the yellow and the zucchini together is uh, really nice. Yes, it is. <laughs> Very colorful. Indeed. Um, so for this recipe, we're going to have um, diced squash. Oh. So I just want to show you a good way to dice it because it's kind of a long ways from being diced. <laughs> so what I like to do is always have a flat surface. So I just cut off one end, okay, a uh, long end, I guess, or side, and then I'm going to cut just quarter quarter inch across, just kind of long strips here. The goal is to not get my hand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, always make sure that that. The flat part is on the bottom, right? Yeah. So you can stack them. You know, it makes it a little bit faster. Um, you don't have to get in any hurry, right? We don't have to be like the chefs on television. Nah. No need for that. We want to keep all our fingers. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't know how often they, the chefs actually have to go to the emergency room, but they, they do. So now we're going to go across like that. So we've just kind of have a nice large dice, a rough dice, I, you could say. Yeah. So um, we'll start out with um, six cups. We're going to have six cups of uh, our mixed squash. And this is, I adjusted this recipe a little bit because I want to have a heart that's healthy, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going with olive oil. The original recipe, I got it from a um, person who has an organic farm, and they, their recipe called for all butter, but instead we're using a quarter cup of olive oil, and then we're using a tablespoon of butter, because you've got to admit that butter does add flavor. <laughs> yes. Gotta admit it. You gotta admit it. <laughs> but olive oil has um, a nice flavor as well. So you can just use a big, you don't have to have an electric skillet, a, a large skillet for this. And I've got this on the electric skillet. I've got this at, at 350 degrees. Okay. Um, so in addition to our squash, uh, we're gonna have some garlic. And I want to mince that garlic. So, okay. so one way, you can get the garlic already minced in the store. Yeah. I don't think it tastes as good as, as doing it yourself, um, mincing it yourself. It just, sometimes it has a little off flavor. Yeah. Uh, but if you're in a big hurry, it, it can substitute. So the way I like to uh, cut up garlic is just put my knife on the side like this, sort of hit that, and then that takes that off so quickly. Oh, yeah and then um, get that one end off and then just again just keeping your your finger away across and then across again and you can just kind of try to mince it so 
stops go quickly across your, your cutting board like that. So, wow, that took what? Not long at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really that hard. We think we need these pre-prepared foods, but it, I think it's just the people selling them that want us to think we need them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I've seen mashed potatoes in the refrigerated section. I'm thinking, okay, mashing potatoes is not that hard, right? Well, the funny thing about that to me is uh, with instant potatoes and things like that is it takes basically maybe six minutes more to make. <laughs> <laughs> To, to make real potatoes? <laughs> right, yeah. So Maybe you're six thinking, to ten minutes more. It's like if you're in that big a hurry. Yes, yeah, so we've just, we've grown accustomed to thinking we need the convenience foods, but we, what we need to do is just practice our, our skills, right? That's right. Yeah, it's not, it's not hard. It just takes a little practice. So this is uh, green onions. There, I went ahead and just, uh, just sort of sliced those thinly, the tops and the bottoms six green onions. Okay. And that always smells good, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's smelling good already. When you cut the garlic, it was, uh, it was smelling Ooh. good. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here we go with our, just put everything in there. Yep. Just start out with it, start out with it on the, in the skillet and finish it in the oven. Okay, so that's, that just needs to cook down a little bit. Get it all co coated in the, the olive oil. So the, the thing about the olive oil is we know it's not gonna raise our blood cholesterol levels. And some people are very fortunate. Um, and I, it really doesn't have to do with the size of a person. Um, you more, are more likely to, to have high cholesterol if you have a diet that's high in a lot of the saturated fats, like the butter or whole milk or whatever, greasy hamburgers. But some people, they can eat that and their liver just doesn't make very much and their cholesterol level is still is okay. So <laughs> other people like me who, who I don't eat... Uh, greasy hamburgers and things like that. Um, I've always had slightly high cholesterol. Um, so I really have to, I really have to uh, watch my diet for that reason. Yeah. Just because, and then also if you think of the, my grandparents and people I've lost in my life, well of course they died of heart disease. So I think looking at your genetics is, uh, a good place to start oh, as yeah. far as your choices go. Okay, so while that's cooking up, we can go ahead and put together our coating that's going to be in our uh, casserole. Okay. So instead of using sour cream, I'm using um, Greek yogurt. Oh, okay. And see, that's that's the thing. It's it's a lighter product, and it has a lot less uh, saturated fat, and uh, pretty much it will double for it pretty well. So I've got the uh, this one has two percent milk fat. I'm not a big fan of no milk fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of the flavor, isn't it? The fat's a little bit of the flavor. And, and the texture as well. And the same thing with the milk. I got, I mean, excuse me, the cheese. I've got the 2% shredded cheddar cheese. I've got one cup of that mixed with a half a cup of uh, the yogurt. And uh, yeah, I don't even think they make the fat-free cheeses anymore. They're, they're so bad. <laughs> so <laughs> people said, ah, I'm... I'm not going for this anymore, so, so I, yeah, I have not seen them lately. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put a little pepper. Don't you have to have a little pepper on your squash, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm. I like the fresh ground pepper. Now, 
Now, really anyone can benefit from eating more vegetables. Um, I know we've talked about that before, but <laughs> let's say that you don't have anyone in your family who's ever had heart disease, so you don't have those genetics, which uh, actually is quite rare, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> lucky duck. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> but chances are somebody in your family um, has had cancer, right? That's the way my husband's family is. Yeah. He, he's, nobody in his family has had heart disease, so... So yeah, it kind of goes crazy. either way. That's the way me and my wife are. Is uh, my family's all heart disease and hers is all cancers. So. Exactly. Yeah. So the vegetables, those are important for everyone, for because they're good for uh, cancer prevention and heart disease prevention. So, but uh, yeah, you still gotta enjoy yourself and have a good southern squash casserole every now and then <laughs> right you gotta live a little <laughs> you gotta live a little <laughs> so uh, because of that i'm gonna put a little salt <laughs> a little salt in here and uh, we'll see this is uh one tablespoon the thing is it's six cups of the squash so if you look at it like that that's really not that much no uh, okay. when you spread it out like that and um I mean, we definitely don't want to be eating a lot of processed foods because that's where you get a lot of your salt. So if you're, if you're cooking from scratch, you're just going to naturally get less. But it does really make a difference in your flavoring. Yeah, yeah I've always heard you, you circle the, the, you go to the outer perimeter of the grocery store so that you're getting the fresh vegetables and mm -hmm. around to the meats and then back around maybe to the bread section, the fresh <laughs> breads they might have. Uh, so you just circle the perimeter, not not get the stuff off the aisles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice if it were that simple, but yeah, the, 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 the produce is always on the perimeter, perimeter, so yeah, so that's that's always nice. Okay, so um, this is almost cooked through. People like varying textures with their vegetables, yeah. um, but. After we get this together, we're going to bake it for about 25 minutes. So that'll, that'll cook it down a little bit too. Um, and chefs always say that you want to have your vegetables fairly crisp. But I think that's a personal preference. Um, yeah. I remember one time I was making some green beans. I was doing a demonstration at a senior center. And uh, this man tasted my green beans, and he said, uh, well, they taste like grass. So <laughs> <laughs> he had probably never had green beans that were not <laughs> Didn't have really bacon fat in them or yes. something, you know, had some grease. <laughs> I appreciated his honesty. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, this, this recipe is not going to work for him. So you're better off cooking them uh, the way you like as far as the doneness goes. But... Uh, so here's our casserole dish. We're going to just spray that with a little bit of, um, I've got an olive oil spray. <laughs> now I've often wondered about that. They could tell you anything's in that thing. <laughs> That's true. We don't know. We don't <laughs> know. Is it olive oil or am I just paying for the green label? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the aerosol. It's still the aerosol that's in there. Well, that's the thing about olive oil in the bottle is that you can smell it, oh, not yeah. in the store, of course, but uh, yeah, this smells really good. This one, um, oh, that's funny. I thought it was from California, but it says Argentina, Chile, Portugal, and California. So I guess oh, they okay. must have run out of olives in, in California. Been around the world. <laughs> they're, they're, yes, it's from around the world. <laughs> But I, I'm sure that there's more of a demand for it because I, than there used to be um, olive oil. So it's amazing they're even keeping up with it. That and sea salt. So yes, yeah, certain things that yeah. that uh, you, nobody used to ever eat, and then all of a sudden it's uh, the thing. Do you need help? I think I got it. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. There we go. That's a lot of squash and zucchini. That is that is a lot, isn't it? <laughs> So uh, we've got zucchini, we've got the yellow squash, uh, 
there's like a, a yellow squash that's straight and one that's got a crook neck and <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there's patty pan which is in in that uh, summer squash category uh, I think those are the most common ones that we see so it's really just melting up that cheese and that that yogurt together isn't it kind really is it since up. it yeah. was uh, that's so warm. So warm. Just comes right together. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's going to add a lot of flavor. Because um, you need different ways that you can cook squash. Oh, if yeah. If you've got a garden full of it, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to have multiple ways <laughs> to cook squash. Definitely. Um, one thing I like to do is oven fry it. That's another option. Mm-hmm where you might dip it in um, some a little bit of egg, milk, um, and then some breadcrumbs, and then put it on a, a baking sheet that's been sprayed with that nonstick spray, and then spray the top. And uh, I do that, and then, uh, and then you turn it over once it's, it's browning on the bottom. I've done it that with squash, and I also do that with eggplant, and it is really tasty. Boy, that really cooks down, doesn't it? You yes, it does. You think that there were six cups of, of squash there. So I've got these uh, Italian-style breadcrumbs. Okay. Um, if I were a purist, um, <laughs> I, would, I would make my own out of whole, whole wheat bread. Um, but I think we'll just go with this. Yeah. It's still going to have a it's lot It's a little of, easier. That's a little convenient, you know. This is, and it has, a, it really does taste good, so. Um, it's got so the Italian gonna, seasoning already in it's it. It's already so. got that seasoning. So, yeah, we just do the best we can, right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you might have some extra whole wheat bread, and you could, you could, uh, make up some bread crumbs, and that way you don't have to, you don't have to waste the bread. Yeah. Get all, multiple uses out of it. Every exactly. Day. All right, so 25 minutes in a okay. 350 degree oven. Okay. And then uh, we will be good to go. Okay. Aha! Look what we have in here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Through the magic of television. <laughs> yes, there it is. <laughs> now, Eric, you usually taste this for me, but I know you noticed you're wearing a mask today. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we will taste after. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. We will. Have, this will be part of our lunch today. This will. This will be after. So. Yes. All right. All well, right, Margie. It looks great and smells great too, and it's good for you. Yay! So uh, hopefully that'll give you a, a tip or two of how to use that summer squash bounty. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. Okay. Mm -hmm.